Last week, I began my sermon by saying that I was trying to refrain from talking about Donald Trump. And once again, he did not make it easy for me with his latest statement this week. No. Instead, let, let's start with this. Um, this is a poster I have in my office. It was released about 10 years ago. I don't know if you can see it. It was released 10 years ago by United Church of Canada for the uh, Emerging Spirit uh, Wonder Cafe initiative. And on it, there's a Bible and there's a yellow post-it and it's saying agree. And there's yellow post-it meaning disagree. I like this poster because it reminds me of my mother. Uh, one day I was going through our books and I discovered this uh, little New Testament in which she had stroke with a pencil all the parts she did not like or believe that should not be in the Bible. Man, I miss her. And one of the passage heavily cross out in my mother New Testament is today's text from the Gospel according to Luke. You see, up, up, to, chapter, in, up to chapter 12, up to this point in chapter 12, Jesus teaches the crowd his usual message. We should trust in God. We should not worry about what tomorrow will bring. Very beautiful, very straightforward. And then out of nowhere, he seems to switch gear and begin to claim, I came to bring fire to earth and I wish it were already kindled. Ooh. And later he continue with, do you think I have come to bring peace on the earth? Uh, yes. No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, two against three. Um, and they will be divided father against son, sons against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against father and mother-in-law, and so on. And we want to say, what? Jesus understood his ministry on earth as bringing fire and division in our family? Yikes. No wonder so many ministers take their holidays in August. Who wants to preach on that? No. For most of us, our first inclination after reading this uh, passage is to believe that someone else uh, came up with this and put those words in Jesus' mouth. Because, let's face it, it makes us uncomfortable. When we close our eyes and try to imagine Jesus, we often see this tall, charismatic man surrounded by his friends, and welcoming children, preaching a message of peace and forgiveness, and proclaiming to love our enemy and do good to those who hate us. That's the Jesus we love. He's not supposed to be like some uh, politicians aiming to divide the people of God with and inflammatory rhetoric. You know, there's enough divisiveness present in society these days. We don't need to hear uh, in our church's words that seems to encourage more of it. Our Savior, our, our Redeemer, our Messiah cannot be someone who keep packing the power keg. It makes no sense. And yet, and yet, if we read our Bible, we would discover conflict everywhere. Upon Jesus' birth, he was still a baby. The prophet Simeon said that it would be a sign of contradiction. When he began to preach, Jesus' brother did not believe him, and his family tried to apprehend him as insane. Jesus was rejected by his hometown of Nazareth. The people of Capernaum tried to throw him down a cliff. A Samaritan village would not even let him enter their town. 
Virtually all religious leaders of the land oppose him fiercely. And Jesus finishes life, executed by the Roman Empire that did not usually, usually crucify people claiming, bless our the peacekeeper. We can carry, we, we can try to wiggle out Jesus' word as much as we want. It remains that his teaching were profoundly subversive to preserve a safe and subversion of Jesus we have to disregard significant chunks of, the gospel, of gospel material. Maybe it's difficult to speak of this side of Jesus in our churches because we have been told that good Christians avoid strife and conflict among themselves. Unity is a prime virtue preached from our pulpit. Ut omnes umun sind, that all may be one, appear on the United Church of Canada's crest. We should never be divided in our community of faith. And when someone comes with a potential controversial ID or initiative, we often say, oh, don't open this can of worm. Don't ruffle feathers the wrong way. Do not create a riff in a congregation. Some people might leave us. Let us wait. Let us wait for a consensus to emerge. Let us preserve peace in our rank. Be patient and try to tolerate the current situation. Tolerate. I don't believe there's a worse word in our vocabulary than tolerate. To tolerate is not to embrace, accept, or value something or someone. To tolerate is to allow the existence without hindrance, to endure without repugnance. When we tolerate someone, we're saying essentially, I don't like you, you can remain here, I will try to say nothing in your face, but in my mind, oh, ho, ho, ho. Now, tolerate is the word used by the majority when it tries to overlook the differences of minorities that makes them uncomfortable. Tolerate is the word that comes up when we are unable to grant equal rights and protection to the vulnerable in our society. Tolerate is the word we repeat to ourselves when we are told we cannot change our world. But Jesus did not, come us, did, did not come to teach us how to tolerate one another or preserve peace at all cost. To all of those who told them and, and still telling us today to keep our place, to preserve the status quo, to silence our voice for the sake of maintaining unanimity, Jesus answered an unapologetic no. No, we cannot remain silent in front of institution based on discrimination. We are called to resist the power brokers of our world who abuse their privileges. We are summoned to take a firm stand and, and even risk relationship with the people we love in order to work against injustices and inequities. Oh, surely it would have been easier for Dietrich Bonhoeffer to rally to the majority of his people and refrain confronting the Nazi regime because they were too dangerous. Many criticized Martin Luther King for his appeal for civil disobedience and public protest because it created chaos. Some supplicate the commissioner of the 38th General Council of the United Church of Canada not to open the door to the ordination of gays and lesbians because it could break our denomination. They have been told that it was not the right time. They should wait a little longer for a broader consensus. But evil had to be defeated. Systematic racism 
had to be broken. Homophobia has, still today, to be overcome. And like them, we cannot remain silent when what is right and just is denied to our brothers and sisters, even if it means creating divisions in our midst, in our families. As disciples of Jesus the Christ, we are called to follow in his footsteps and to be actively involved in the transformation of our world, to make it a better place. We are called to promote peacemaking, mercy, justice, even if it lead us, leads us to face mockery and rejection. We are called to defend human rights, the human rights of our friends, and also the human rights of our enemies, even if it's not always popular among our peers. We're called to denounce unjust policies of our democratically elect government, even if it means publicly oppose our leader. We are called to mend God's creation, even if it requires to turn our back to some industrial sectors of our economy. We are called to work for social justice, even if it put in jeopardy our own comfort, our own safety, our voices, our actions, our defiance must, might not always be understood or accepted by our friends or family. Nevertheless, our faith, our beliefs, our spirituality drive us to work for justice and renewal. Today's extremely challenging passages from the Gospel according to Luke is one of those numerous calls made by Jesus to subvert our social order. Over and again, we have been told to oppose the agenda of those who use wealth, power, religion, and family ties to abuse the common good. And as Christians, we are not called to preserve peace at all costs, or tolerate one another, or accept blindly what we have been taught about Jesus, about the Bible. We are called to stand on our own two feet, to be strong, to be courageous, and to be unafraid of potential divisions when we ought to say, no, no, this is not acceptable anymore. Amen.